All right. I think we have a good number of people in the in the call. So I think we could kick things off. Thanks for everyone for joining. Uh, hope, hope you're having a great day today and uh, excited for today's webinar and to present to all of you. So uh, let's let's go ahead and get started. We're we're uh, excited for this for this presentation. My name is Rushi Shah. I'm VP of Product Management here. Uh, I've been pretty involved with the integrations that we've worked on here at Y Charts and also uh, lead a lot of our product management efforts. So uh, anything new you see on Y Charts, um, you know that's that's something our product management team works with and. Uh, we're excited about these integrations and, and what we've done with some of our partners like Orion. And so today I am very excited to be joined by Ben. So Ben, why don't you introduce yourself? Yeah, thanks so much, Rishi. Appreciate the opportunity here and appreciate the, uh, the continued partnership from the folks at YCharts. Uh, my, my name is Ben France. I oversee business developments in the uh, central territory uh, of the U.S. here at, at Orion uh, on the tech side, uh, partnering with with firms, you know, kind of uh, all across the the region, uh, to just learn a little bit more about Orion, our technology, our ecosystem, and you know how we partner with uh, with, with with great firms like like Y Charts as well. Awesome, great. Well, thanks, Ben, and and thanks for joining us today. Um, just a quick agenda, and before I jump into the agenda, actually, a quick housekeeping items. Um, if this is your first time being on a, a Zoom webinar. Um, you should see that Q&A section at the bottom of the screen. So feel free to throw in some questions in there. Ben and I will try and handle those as we go through the webinar. Um, and then also, uh, if you're on the call or if you're registered, uh, you will see a recording of this hit your inbox once that's ready. So you'll be able to tune in if you wanted to rewatch a certain section or anything like that. Um, also, feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, this webinar recording will be housed on YouTube. We have a lot of other uh, great content there and some more webinars as well. So that's a great place to go. Um, lastly, before we jump into things, uh, please keep in mind this content is meant for educational purposes only. It's not intended to be investment advice, nor is YCharts acting as an advising party regarding client funds in any way. Um, so let's let's go ahead and kick things off. Uh, today we're gonna we're gonna start off with an Orion overview, and then we'll jump into Y charts a little bit, and we'll actually go into the tools and give you a, a demo. So if you're new to the integration, this is great to just kind of view how to get started and get set up and how that data is gonna look. But also, if you have been using the integration, it'll be a great opportunity to cover some of the new features that we've added recently. Um, and then lastly, we'll just touch on a few of those use cases of using both tools together. Um, so with that, Ben, I'll pass it to you. Why don't you tell us a little bit about Orion? Yeah, yeah, no, thanks so much. So, um, you know, a few things that, uh, and again, for those that may not uh, be as familiar with Orion, uh, right, what our, what our goal is, what our uh, objective is here in the, in the market today is to provide uh, really, you know, in industry leading, um, you know, uh, the industry leading tool that really enables advisors to uh, become fiduciaries and continue to maintain that fiduciary status, you know, with their advisors, uh, or with their clients, excuse me. Um, and really what, uh, you know, what that boiled down to is, is really this, this process that we've created and built our technology ecosystem upon. Uh, and so that's what we call our PPIA or prospect plan, invest and achieve, um, uh, process. And so, uh, again, you see here on screen, right, we're, we're, we're kind of dividing the system, dividing the Orion ecosystem into uh, four you know, distinct segments or sections and, and really letting that drive our development, drive our, um, drive our process internally as well. Uh, when we look at, you know, what we're wanting to, to provide to advisors so that advisors can ultimately provide uh, a best of breed solution to their end clients. So, uh, we talk about prospects, right? We talk about the, the CRM within Orion with, with Redtail, with uh, the marketing tools we have within Redtail um, to help drive uh, prospects and clients to be more involved in that planning process using the Orion planning tool. Uh, then we you know, take that into the invest uh, pillar of the, of the Orion ecosystem, right? Whether you're leveraging some of the Orion third party wealth management um, arms, uh, such as Orion Portfolio Solutions, Town Score Capital, any of those. Uh, any of those components of Orion, right? But then also obviously managing assets in-house, leveraging the integration with Y-Charts, which, which we'll touch on here today. 
Um, and then finally achieve, right? So again, we talk about some of those operational efficiencies, some of those things that we're doing uh, to really help you as, an, as a firm uh, achieve uh, efficiency in your operations to be able to kind of free up your staff internally to spend more time with clients, right? Because that's that's ultimately what we're what we're all here for, right? Is, is to serve clients. Um, and so that's again kind of that that achieve pillar here within this uh, fiduciary process. So uh, if you wouldn't mind going to the next slide there, Rushin, I'll kind of just give just the uh, high level overview on again who we are today here in 2023, right? So um, Again, if you're not familiar with Orion, maybe I've seen our name out in the uh, out in the industry publications here over the past uh, you know two to three years. Uh, right, a lot of a lot of acquisitions, a lot of additional pieces that have come under the Orion umbrella uh, recently. One of the major ones being Redtail CRM. So, uh, obviously, very excited to, to have Redtail as part of the Orion ecosystem. Uh, I think we just did uh, a white charts webinar with, with Redtail as well not too long ago. So, um, obviously, a great partnership with with Redtail and White Charts. Um, and again, I won't read these numbers on screen here, just again, getting a better sense of, you know, what, uh, you know, what, what Orion looks like today, right? 1400 employees across the country, um, in offices from California to, uh, to New York, um, for, from service development, um, you know, really just enabling our advisors to, to have not only, you know, best of breed technology solution, but also best of breed service experience when we look at the, uh, the folks that are there to, to help them out. Uh, at the end of the day. So um, with that, enough about enough about me, enough about Orion. We shall turn it over to you to, uh, to to finish it off. Yeah, thanks, man. That was that was super helpful. And and yeah, I agree. It's been great that, you know, we're integrated with both Redtail and Orion. And while the functionality is the same, I'm sure advisors enjoy the fact that they can use that whole ecosystem together. Um, so yeah, with that, I'll I'll give a quick overview on Y charts before we jump into the demo. Um, really, if you're new to Y charts, uh, we're an investment research platform and we help make smarter investment decisions. That's really uh, where we stand within the advisor tech stack. And the way we do that is, um, you know, we have these key benefits of we help you with AUM growth and retention. We really provide you significant time savings. You know, Ben touched on the fact that we want to allow you to spend as much time with your clients. And so saving time with that research side of things is, is super important, which we'll which we'll go through today. Um, and then lastly, just better outcomes and client satisfaction. We, we really um, have been building a lot of the product out for client communication and helping you get the message across, whether it's about your portfolio, whether it's about the markets, whatever you wanna talk about um, when it's related to those markets or portfolios, YCharts helps you do that. And I like talking about how we do that with this, uh, this cycle here. Um, and just five use cases there of, of how, how we provide that research and co client communication use case. And I'll start here in the, in the left side when uh, in terms of market and portfolio monitoring. So I'll talk a little bit about this on the demo as well, but you have that dashboard, you have a section where you can set up alerts and really know where things are in the markets throughout the day. Having Y charts open on, on one page or one monitor at, in your office is, is a great way to just keep, keep a pulse on the markets while you're uh, handling a million other things throughout the day. And what that kind of leads into is the research capabilities with Y charts. So not only are you able to keep a pulse on the market, but you're also able to find new investment ideas. You're able to use our screening and comp tables tools to to find that next best investment and really dig into the data and understand where you can maybe make a few tweaks in, in some of your portfolio strategies. This integration is really this, this third part here, portfolio construction. That's where this Orion integration has been so powerful and, and a place where a lot of our, our mutual users love this integration is pulling in those portfolios or models from Orion and pulling them into Y charts to then dig a little deeper, dig under the hood and understand what, what their clients are invested in. So using that integration, using our model portfolios tool is, is a big use case for this. Um, and then just kind of closing out that, that last loop of this is, is that client communication piece. So having uh, PDF reports, having visuals, having our charting tools um, and being able to just quickly export any of those to prepare for a client meeting, to be ready for your client communications those visuals are super important and we've we've invested a lot of time into making sure that those are the best they can be for your client conversations. 
So I wanted to just kind of share uh, just quickly, George Moore, he's a Y charts user. Uh, I'm not sure if you're on the call, George, but George, you know, I had a great conversation with him about how he's using the Y charts and Orion integration. And he really has, you know, like a lot of Orion users, they have their, their database in Orion. And he's using that database to, to grab portfolios, to prep for those meetings. And it's just helping him with efficiency and having those uh, client and model portfolios in both places. And that's what we'll, we'll kind of go into here today. And uh, Ben, I'll, I'll actually pass it to you and I'll stop my screen share um, so that you could jump into Orion and maybe we could put ourselves in the shoes of advisors. Maybe you're prepping for a client meeting, which right now, this time of year, you know, it's a new year. Maybe you want to reposition things and talk to your clients about where they are currently and where you potentially want to take them. So Ben, I'll pass it to you to, to do that, to the, do the Orion side. Yeah, no, happy to uh, happy to take us through that. So, um, within with, within Orion, uh, right? You know, the I think the the context that we're you know that that we're looking at uh, that we're looking at here within uh, in the scope of this this demonstration is is more so that you know again we're uh, meeting with a client, preparing for a meeting with a client, um, and and I think one tool that we have that that really helps identify and, and really kind of personify right the that overview process is the is the portfolio view tool here within Orion so um, what we're looking at here is uh, Ethel Smith her corporation account ending in 2725 uh, within the within the the, the lens of the uh, portfolio view tool within Orion right so we have all of the positions the transactions the cost basis all that pulled into the database every single day um, that, that again we have available for any account. And then what we'll do is we'll take a lot of the data and, and again sync that over to uh, to Y charts, right? With respect to um, the, uh, the the holdings, the cost basis, the model assignment as well. So, um, and then the uh, another kind of key integration enhancement, if you will, that we've that we've made recently is is really um, making sure that asset classifications, uh, product classifications, are synonymous between Y charts and Orion to it can really create some some additional efficiency for you, right? To to make sure that things are classified properly um, across platforms, uh, to to save you time without having to go in and manually adjust different components and different pieces of uh, of both systems. So again, what we're looking at here is is again Ethel Smith's uh, account uh, at a high level, what we call category allocation perspective. Right, just in this case, she's got. 4.7 million in uh, in equities, and then you know, $100,000 in, in cash sitting here in this account. And then the asset class level, right? We've got most of it sitting here in common stock. And then we can scroll down, see again, performance versus maybe her assigned benchmark we've assigned within the Orion system. Uh, she's got a few different assigned benchmarks that we can take a look at there. Um, but then we can also kind of drill down into, you know, each one of these components or cards on screen and really dive as deep or stay as high level as we would like right here within this portfolio view tool. So uh, again, if I come in here to adjust this, everything refreshes dynamically on screen. So it makes it a little bit more of an impactful uh, conversation with the end client, right? When, whether it's uh, a screen share opportunity or maybe the, the end client is sitting here with us uh, in, in our office during a meeting, right? We're able to kind of pull this up on screen, maximize the space uh, and really dive down into you know, our equity portion of our portfolio, our, you know, in this case, cash portion of our portfolio, right? How much in cash do we have? What's our performance uh, for that time frame? Our true time weighted return performance calculation here. Um, and then within here, we can also, you know, dive deeper into, you know, the, the allocation details, right? What's the allocation? What has the allocation looked like over time? How has it changed with our, within our asset classes? Um, and then diving deeper into the transaction activity, performance, gains, losses over time, realized and non-realized income. And then again, you may be familiar with our Orion planning tool um, as well here. So again, a lot that we can uncover that we can kind of dive deeper into right here on screen. Um, but again, our, our goal with, with a lot of this detail with a lot, oops, sorry, I meant to click on this one, target comparison. Um, our goal with the portfolio view tool here is that again we're wanting to bring as much data on screen here in a more dynamic fashion to allow to allow you as the advisor to pull up detail on any client account uh, right here on screen and really just you get a snapshot 
and be able to present that ultimately to the end client. Uh, again, whether that's via screen share here, or maybe it's uh, again, an in-person meeting, that's really you know, how we've designed this tool uh, to, you know, to really fit, fit that need um, when we talk about client interaction. Um, so again, I'll, I'll kind of end it here on the, the target comparison screen. Again, you can see here that uh, Ethel Smith's account is assigned to our 80-20 mutual fund model here that we've created in our demo database. Uh, so again, that data point, uh, along with all the holdings, along with all of the evaluations, right? All that is synced over to Y charts every single day for you. Uh, so again, really make sure that again, data is, is synonymous, data is consistent across the two platforms, uh, so that everything is is exactly what you would expect um, between both of the the two platforms on a daily basis. So, um, with that, I'll, I'll turn it back over to you, Rushi, to uh, come take us through the, the the Y chart side of things and show us a little bit of Ethel's account on your side. Yeah, that's great. Thanks for uh, thanks for uh, sharing that. And also, I'm glad we we chose the sample model because it's a fun one to look at in Y charts with uh, about eighty percent in one stock. Um, so <laughs> let's let's go into uh, Ethel's account. But before we jump into Ethel's account, let's uh, let's dig into basically you know Y charts in general. Um, I, I have my dashboard open here, which is a great first place to start. Uh, the dashboard is when you log in, it's the first page you see. You can actually customize the dashboard to, um, you know, move around different sections. If you want certain charts here, you can resize them. It's kind of the aggregated market view. If you want your model portfolios on here listed, uh, maybe you have some underlying holdings. Uh, we've built a lot of these types of pages for that market monitoring aspect. Um, so this is a great spot to start. We also have these data pages, which are pretty cool. So maybe, um, you know, again, market monitoring, you want to look at where the S&P 500 is at today, what's driving it up, what's driving it down. Um, this is a good spot to see that data and, and just keep an eye on it in general. Something else that we provide, you know, you could build a lot of this stuff from scratch. Um, we have tools like our fundamental charting tool or our scatter plot tool. Um, or just data tables or, or a lot of things in terms of the tools that you can use on YCharts. But we don't want to stop there. We also want to provide you as an advisor with that, with those talking points or with some of those market related charts. So I'm just going to show one example. Uh, we have this economic update that we release quarterly. And this is just giving you a general uh, overview on the economy, on where it's at, uh, where the markets are at. I'll just quickly scroll through this, but this is just one example of some of that market information that uh, we give you so that you have some of those talking points and you can stay on top of your, your overall research. So great little resource that I, I like to show uh, just to kind of give, give some advisors a flavor of what we provide from the research side of things. So, you know, let's kind of go back into the advisor seat of preparing this meeting with Ethel. Um, you've looked through some of this market information. You, you, you've picked and choose some of these charts that you want to highlight with your client. The other aspect is what Ben kind of covered, and that's let's talk about your portfolio, Ethel, and let's go through that. And that's where this integration is going to be really cool for you. And I'll start with the basics of how to get set up with it. Um, so if you hover over support, you can actually click on integrations here. And you'll see all of our integration partners. We have Orion there. We also have uh, Redtail there uh, and a few others. Mine's already active with Orion, but if yours is showing as inactive or this is the first time you're, you're logging in, you just click on manage here and click on activate and it just allows you to log in to connect the two tools. So once you do that, you're, you're ready to go. It's, it's a simple login. Um, you'll see that active button. And where this integration is really valuable is within our model portfolios tool. Our model portfolios tool is, you know, if I build this from scratch, I can go in here and enter in my portfolio name, enter in different holdings and enter in weights if I wanted to, shares, dollars. It's basically where you can create this portfolio within Y charts. And this integration automates that whole process, which is, which is really cool. So I could click on this import dropdown and click on Orion. And there's a few options that you can search by. Um, and Ben, do you mind just kind of men, uh, talking through what the difference are between differences in Orion between yeah. like a client and account and then model and model aggregate as well? Yeah, happy to. So 
uh, a client would be a, a household level, right? So an aggregate of accounts, uh, right? So again, we use Ethel Smith, right? We're earlier, we're looking at just her corporation account, right? But maybe she has an IRA and an individual account. So all three of those accounts would be grouped together as a, at that client level or household level. Account level, right? Is going to be a unique account number at the custodian. Uh, so again, Ethel Smith is the is that uh, account. Um, the model and model aggregate. So you know, there's a, there's a few different terms that we use within Orion for you know for models, right? So you can think of a model as just this a basket of securities, right? So you have um, twenty stocks, twenty mutual funds, twenty ETFs, right? That can be your model. Uh, but then what we can also do is we can create a model aggregate, which would be a model of unique security baskets or security sets, if you will. So we can have um, multiple baskets of securities all rolled up to one model aggregate as well. Perfect, thanks. That, that overview was helpful. And for this example, since we're importing Ethel Smith's account, we'll just go ahead and search by Ethel to, to find this person. And this is all data we're pulling from Orion. This is all sample data for, for this webinar, but that's why I have multiple, but you might have all of your clients that meet, meet those search parameters. So I can go ahead and select Ethel. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna go ahead and pull all the accounts that are associated with that client. So Ben just mentioned that's like the household. Um, these are all the underlying accounts. So if you had six or seven accounts here, they would all show up within this menu. And then you can pick one of these accounts to import. You could household like maybe five or six of them if you wanted to look at an aggregated view. Uh, for this example, we're just gonna select this one account and go ahead and import that account. So I showed this page earlier of how you can kind of type all this up from scratch. Uh, this is the imported data. You saw how quickly that comes in from Orion. And now we have Ethel Smith's account here. Um, we mask that uh, portfolio account number just so that we're not pulling in any PII data into Y charts. Uh, but we do have these dollar amounts that will auto add up to the, your overall portfolio value, just so that everything in Orion is going to align with everything in Y charts. And you can see we have our holdings here and we have our, our dollar values. Uh, if you wanted to add an advisory fee right on here, you can. Um, you could change the rebalance frequency. Uh, change the benchmark, all sorts of things uh, from this page when you're actually creating that portfolio. Uh, for, for this demonstration, I actually already have this. I'm just going to jump into my uh, Ethel Smith portfolio. And it usually takes about a minute or two if, if you're creating that from that page. But um, right here, I have this portfolio open. And um, it's really cool that Ben was able to show what's on the Orion side. Uh, we have a lot of the same data and uh, we have a couple other components as well. So it might be helpful to use both together, get some of that account data or portfolio data, maybe specific uh, cost basis and things like that from Orion. But then on Y charts, maybe you, if you wanted to dig deeper into what's in these holdings, um, what's going on with this portfolio in general. So I think that's a great use case of how you could coincide what you're doing in both tools. This page here, um, it, it basically has that over, overview of this portfolio. So it's gonna show you key stats. Um, you can actually customize this uh, portfolio risk statistics, performance statistics. This is all gonna be a snapshot of your current holdings. So um, I think I saw a question come in about trades and if trades are allocated uh, or included in this. For this type of portfolio, it's not gonna be included. So this is a snapshot of your current allocation from Orion. Um, and then a couple other, other tabs we have here. Um, so I can click on allocations tab and we can view basic asset allocation, uh, region exposure. Maybe you wanted to see what countries this person is based or their portfolio holdings are based in, uh, sector exposure, et cetera. Um, all that data is available here. What I also love about these portfolio pages is the holdings tab. And so you're prepping for this meeting with Ethel. And I love that this portfolio has 77% in uh, AMD. And hopefully that's an easy talking point for you um, or something to cover. But what you could actually do is click on this categorize sub tab and let's switch it and group it by sector. This view is pretty cool because now I have all my holdings and what their weights are, but I can also 
get some key stats of my portfolio, break it out by sector and say, um, you know, how much is in uh, AMD or how much is in tech in total? We have 83% in tech and the tech holdings that this client has are actually underperforming uh, the overall like sector ETF. So good talking points, good information you can gain just from this holdings tab and start, start digging deeper. And so at this point, you know you want to make changes to Ethel's portfolio. You're prepping for that client meeting. Uh, something else that's really cool about this integration is not only can you import those client accounts, but you can also import models. So if you have model strategies in Orion, um, I, I'll, or you could actually just import those using the same process. So I'm going to, again, import another portfolio. And for Ethel, maybe there is another one that I have on my account that I want to pull in. Um, I believe I had it called balanced. Let's try that. That's not it. Um, let's see here. I think I have it in my account here. Let's try strategy. All right, so I'm under account, or sorry, model. I'm gonna search strategy. Yep, here it is. Here's the balanced strategy model that I wanted to pull in. So I'm gonna go ahead and import that exact strategy from Orion. Um, same concept here, instead of those dollar values being imported though, I'm gonna have weights that are imported. And this is something that will come up sometimes. And I, I think I actually saw another question about this too. What if there's a holding in Orion that Y charts doesn't cover? So if you have an, a call option, or if you have a certain security that you're importing from Orion and we don't have it in Y charts, you'll see this screen pop up where you'll actually be able to put in a proxy here. So maybe this is a old security or some type of you know, option contract or something like that. I can just go ahead and replace that with whatever security I'd like that we do have on Y charts. And then it'll actually ask you like, do you wanna save that as a proxy? So now anytime moving forward, if you pull in that exact same holding, that exact same call option from Orion, it's gonna automatically switch it to this proxy for you. That way you don't have to do that continuously. So it's gonna do that and I'll hit continue and update and you'll see those target weights for my model strategy that I'm gonna put Ethel in. And I'm gonna go ahead and, and save that down. So now I have that strategy saved down. I, this one too, I, I have it on my account already uh, from Orion. So we're gonna to go to that page. Um, now let's do some comparing and contrasting. Let's look at Ethel's portfolio. Let's compare. Let's compare and see how that looks against um, you know, this balanced model that you pulled in from Orion. That's where QuickFlows is really cool. Um, it's, it's this tool that we have on Y charts where you can quickly click on one thing and it takes you into another portion of Y charts. And it's great for that compare and contrasting use case. So within this comparison menu, you could type in all any security you want. Um, over here, I already have these two here, Ethel Smith's uh, corporation model portfolio, and then also that balance strategy. And I'm gonna run through a few of these. So let's just first, um, maybe you wanna dig into the data. Let's look at risk, for example. Let's start there. Um, Ethel's entering in that portion of his, of, of his or of their life where they're really, you know, kind of taking a pause and, and saying, I don't need to be invested in stocks as much. I'm more in this capital preservation standpoint. So maybe you don't wanna have this high of a max drawdown in that portfolio or this high of a standard deviation or alpha or beta. And maybe you, know, you wanna talk through these risk metrics. You saw how I clicked in one place and I was able to see the risk statistics. Another one that we just saw in that holdings tab was sector breakdown, right? We saw that really high tech sector exposure. I again clicked on one quick flow now I have the same view, but we're looking at sector exposures and technology looks a lot more in check with this balance strategy. It's about 23% instead of 86%. So we're in a much better place from a technology standpoint. Now let's go into some visuals. So now you know the data. Let's look at just simply a performance chart. How did how do these two portfolios stack up? Uh, maybe we're talking with Ethel about 2022. I'm going to change the time frame to 2022 and say, 
wow, you know, your portfolio had a 47% drawdown with the way it's allocated right now. This strategy is a much more safer strategy in terms of capital preservation. The drawdown or, or the total return in 2022 was closer to about 15%. So uh, maybe this is something that's a little bit more comforting for Ethel. You want to uh, export this chart and include it in a presentation that you're giving to Ethel. Another one I, I love, and this is the last one I'll cover, is the risk reward scatter plot. So I could click right there and say, all right, we're kind of reeling you in, in terms of performance and risk. We're getting to that stage in your life. Um, we don't want you to be way out here where uh, your risk and return, your, your potential for return is much higher, but your potential for risk is much higher. Let's pull you into this, which is a little bit more comfortable. Maybe you want to talk to them about those two versus like the S&P 500 and uh, just like the Barclays Ag, for example, if you want to cover a few different uh, asset classes in general. And you can say, hey, this is where we're putting you. This is where the S&P 500 generally is. And this is where you were, which is way out there from a risk and return standpoint. So you can see how you can start building this story with Ethel and talk through that client meeting with them. Now you're at the stage of, of building, out, building this out and having that meeting with Ethel. So you've gotten these visuals, you have this information ready to go. You're ready to pitch this and implement it within Orion. One last stage that I think is really cool on Y charts is you can actually create PDF reports straight from here. So if I'm in Ethel's portfolio and I wanna give a full breakdown of where they are currently versus where we wanna take them, we have this reports button here and we have overview reports, which will just compare the, or just talk about this portfolio. And then we have a side-by-side -side report, which is what we call comparison reports. And that's gonna give you that side-by-side -side view of the two against each other. So I can go here and uh, just find the report that I want. Maybe I want a comprehensive one uh, just to go through those two portfolios. Again, I have this downloaded, ready to go, just to show you a little preview. Um, you know, here's your title page. You can customize the colors on here, add your logos, all sorts of things. Um, you can view performance and risk. You can take sections out of here. Uh, we actually just released a uh, report builder. So you can actually customize these reports and say, you know what, I want this section in here. I don't want annual returns, or maybe you wanna reorder these things based on your talking track. You can do all of that and fully customize this report so that you have it um, exactly aligned with how you have your conversations. So that's pretty much it. Um, I know I went through a lot of the tool. I tried to show you as much as I could, but um, you know that's that's pretty much the the real value in this integration. Um, one more enhancement I'll just quickly touch on before we uh, kind of end this demo. One thing we added as well, and let me clear out these filters. Um, if I have a portfolio I imported from Orion, and let's say you made a trade in Orion and you made a change and you're, you're meeting with your client again, you could actually go right here and refresh your imported holdings. And that'll just let you actually uh, just go ahead and import that same exact portfolio again. So you don't have to keep searching like Apple every single time. If you're meeting with your client quarterly and you just want to refresh that import from Orion, the data is going to update daily, but if you made a trade, it won't. So that refresh functionality was added as of late. So hopefully that helps with that, that whole process as well. Yeah. Well, that's, that seemed like a fairly consistent question that I was, was monitoring there. So appreciate you touched on that, Rishi. Uh, I guess one question that I had and it did come up on the, on the list here and uh, the the integration is set up uh is it is it the credentials are linked remind me uh like uh somebody would enter in their orion credentials into the white charts platform to to allow data to sync is that right so we actually uh we use something called an oauth authentication and what that means is we don't store your orion username and password on white charts at all so if i'm going in here and i can i can just run through this really quickly um, if I want to go ahead and activate this, I'll log into Orion and it'll actually take me to Orion to log in. Yeah. And you just hit sign in and uh, just allow the disclaimer or read through that. And then it activates it. 
And then we're just storing the fact that you've authenticated it and we, ha we have that constant communication with Orion. We're not storing yeah. your, your login and password. Sure. Yeah, and I think, <clears throat> excuse me, the, I think the, the question too was more so that um, if, if you are one individual within a larger firm and you are the only one that wants to, to leverage this integration, then it wouldn't grab the data for everybody else. It would only grab the data that's tied to your login uh, at that point. So exactly. Um, yeah. Since you'll have your own Orion login and your own Y charts login, it's, it's your own account. Um, but that also does bring up a great other point. Let's say you're at a firm and you have uh, five different advisors that are using both Y charts and Orion and you want to share data across each other. You maybe you have models that your whole firm is using. You can actually share data on Y charts so that the rest of your team gets it. So there's a lot of that cross collaboration, which is great. Okay. That makes sense. Um, the, and I think there are a few questions kind of related to this same, same item, but the, the integration uh, with, with the models, uh, right? So again, if, if you have the model maintained in Orion, you have the model maintained in, uh, you have the model maintained in, in Orion and have the integration set up, the model syncs into Y charts on a daily basis um, in terms of like, if I, if I made a change to the model within Orion one day, that push of data the next, the next time that it, that it goes out, that gets grabbed automatically, right? The only time you have to use that refresh is when there's intraday movement or what, you just clarify that? Yeah, yeah. So that's a great question. It actually, we don't communicate with Orion every single night. So when you import that portfolio, it's a one-time import and we have that data updated. And what happens on Y charts is we track the performance of those holdings. So if you don't make any trades over the next month and you just kind of have those holdings in there, it's going to update the same way because we have that performance data. Yeah. However, when you do make those trades and you, you want to refresh that import, you just hit that button and it, and it re-pulls in that updated data. Got it, okay. And then uh, it looks like there was one question about the, the red sale integration. Again, I know we did, did a webinar and, and I'm sure we'd be happy to, happy to send, the, send over that webinar as well, but um, the red sale integration is, is somewhat similar in nature to the Orion integration. Yeah, so, yeah, right Right now, the way the, re the red tail one works is pretty similar. Um, when you're importing, just because red tail structured a little bit differently in terms of the account data, um, when you import from red tail, you can search by your contact. And then um, once you search for that contact, all the underlying account data will come through. So that's another example of a um, just a way you can search for your client. Got it. Okay. Um, and then it looks like there's a few other questions that might be more pertinent to, uh, to your knowledge base. Here yeah, as well, yeah. I, I see one about, is there a limit to the number of portfolios and models that can import into Y charts? There's not a limit. So um, we've had some users import hundreds of portfolios. Uh, feel free to do that. Uh, it is, yeah, just, yeah, you, there is no limit. And also in terms of holdings as well, uh, in your portfolios, you can have up to 500 holdings. So that's kind of the limit in terms of if you're like householding a bunch of accounts together, um, we do have the, that capability too. I also see a question uh, about the sector report, ignoring mutual funds. And uh, I'll just go into that real quick here. So what it actually does is it, if you do have a mutual fund within here, it'll actually put it at the bottom of the page. So since these are all stocks, you'll notice here in other, we have, maybe you have like a money market fund or a different mutual fund. It'll just bucket those here at the bottom. And uh, that way there, you'll still see them, but they won't be in one of these underlying sectors. And then you can actually export this into like a PDF if you wanted to as well, so that'll also throw those mutual funds at the bottom. I also see a question about our PDF reports uh, for clients SEC compliant. Um, we actually did go through a, um, a 
pretty good process with a firm called Dalbar to kind of look at Y charts and see, um, you know, how we could better change the way our disclosures work and, and performance and things like that. Um, so we've made quite a bit of changes to accommodate for that. We also actually let you customize the disclosures on your reports. So if your firm has a certain process or certain information that you need to include in a PDF report to then share with your clients, you could just send that our way and we'll add it to your account. And that way those, those clients can be, or sorry, those PDF reports can be client facing. And then I also see another question about um, client info being stored in Y charts or if it's just the last four. So yeah, from a compliance standpoint, we totally understand in terms of like PII data, like account numbers or client names or things like that. None of that data is fully sent over to Y charts. So it does mask that information um, once it's imported. So that way, you know, none of that data is just exposed within your Y charts account. So we do mask that information. Not it. And then uh, we're not, and, and I, I'm fairly confident in my answer to this one, but uh, the there's no transaction activity that's synced, right? It's just the, the holdings data, right? That that would uh, create quite a bit more data that we'd be we'd be syncing on a daily basis, right? With transaction activity. Yeah, exactly. So at this point, it is just that snapshot view of the portfolio. Um, like I mentioned, we do have this concept of a dynamic model portfolio, where if you did have those transactions, you could upload those and uh, basically right. have those trades over time. So if you want to do that, just uh, reach out to us if you, if you have a YCharts account right now, or if you want to learn more about how that works, and we could show you how that, that process would, would go. Sure. And I do apologize for the uh, dog barking in the background on my side there. <laughs> we had our daily Amazon delivery here at, uh, at my house. So <laughs> uh, no, no worries. Um, I think we've covered most of it unless Ben, you wanted, if there was another question you wanted to cover here. Um, I think some of them may require a little bit more um, due diligence if you will, on my side in terms of being able to, to, to provide a, a better answer. Um, so I, I can certainly take some of these off offline. We can, divide and conquer, if you will, to, to make sure everybody gets the, the questions answered that we didn't get to. Okay, awesome. Yeah, if there's anything that was unanswered, we'll, we'll definitely reach out to, to to make sure your support contact here at YCharts uh, gets back to you. Um, but yeah, other than that, wanted to, to just close things out by uh, saying thank you for joining. Um, if you have any additional questions or you wanna check out a trial of YCharts, um, or get in touch with Orion. We have the information right here. You can go to orion.com slash uh, ycharts dash connect, or sorry, contact, or uh, you can just go to ycharts.com and start a free trial and, and we'll be able to help you and answer any questions you have. So with that, I'll close things out. Thanks so much, Ben, for, for joining and thank you everyone for spending some time with us to learn more about this amazing integration.